Hey YouTube, Copper Sand here. This video is a simplified trading spot guide that will show you all the most popular trading maps all the way to level 260, so that you too can level fast with your new characters. This trading guide works for both Reboot and regular server, as all monsters are the same now across all servers. If you have link skills, make sure to equip the Mercedes, Avon and Aaron link skills as those all boost EXP in some form. Use the Zero Legion effect for more EXP and set your Legion to EXP if you have that. Besides that, get as many sources of damage, critical rate, critical damage and normal monster damage as possible. This will all help you grind faster. Starting off at level 10, some classes are stuck in tutorials until level 30. They can skip to that point of the video using the chapters. You usually first get sent to Hennessy's, here walk to the right and defeat monsters needed to complete those one assigned quests, those give a good chunk of EXP. For the more experienced maplers with legion and link skills, go to Mushmom right away. Accept the one assigned quest and defeat her for instant level ups. Change channel to defeat her in all channels for fast EXP. The same trick can be done with blue Mushmom. If those are already defeated and they don't spawn, go to the golems near Hennessy's. Any golem map is fine really. After reaching level 20, you can travel to either the Road to the Mine 2 in Edelstein, these monsters are level 31, or Shaded Dump Site in Savage Terminal. If you're really strong, you can basically go here starting from level 10. The reason why you want to go here as soon as possible is because runes spawn in maps with monsters level 30 and above. Runes give double EXP for a few minutes, so we want to use those to grind faster. Reaching level 30, we are going to complete two theme dungeons. If you're hyper burning, you will only be able to complete one before you start out leveling those dungeons. I highly recommend to complete the Elinel Fairy Academy and Rihanna Strait theme dungeons. The order doesn't matter. The reason for this is that we're going to train at Starforce monsters later and we need these rewards from the theme dungeons as they're cheap to Starforce. If you're unlucky you won't get any boss drops from monsters, so the rewards from these dungeons will help you substitute these items. Once you hit level 33, make sure to claim your free pet from the Have You Learned About Pets quest in the light bulb. This sheep also has an auto HP and MP function which is great for the squishier characters. If you already have gear prepared or have enough Mesos to Star Force other gear, grind at Mr. Hazard's Layer 3 in Savage Terminal until level 35, 40-ish. Then go to Wild Boars in Pyrian until level 45, level 50 depending on your damage and link skills. Then get to level 60 at the hidden map with the Skeledox. You can use the guide menu to teleport there directly. Once you completed both theme dungeons, you just go to the Skeledox to reach level 60. Completing both theme dungeons will get you to around level 55. If you're used to playing on a reboot, with the New Age update, the monsters EXP and HP ratios have been changed to be the same as the monsters in the regular server. This makes it a lot easier to one-shot monsters and you can now train at monsters at least 20 levels higher than your character, if you got the damage, so don't be afraid to go to higher level monsters faster. At level 60, you can go to the Copper Sand Drakes in Sleepy Wood in the Silent Swap map. This is probably one of the most popular maps around this level, as you can just jump down and teleport back using the teleporter in the map. You can also go to Cave Cliff if all maps are occupied. Because I personally have more Legion and Link skills, I went straight to Stairway to the Sky 1 in Orbis. The monsters here are level 71, and unless you are playing on a brand new account or server, you shouldn't have too many issues grinding here right away from level 60 onwards. Between level 70 and 75, go to Sahel 2 in the Nihal Desert, or go to one map to the right if you want more spawn, and if you prefer a smaller map but Sahel 2 is full, enter the portal at the top left to go into a similar map. And also, once you hit level 60, you will unlock the Have You Learned About Potential and Bonus Stats quest in the light bulb. Complete them for a free ring and shoulder, and make sure to star force the shoulder to 5 stars, as we'll need that for later. At level 76, I went to Authorized Personnel Only, which is a hidden map at Megatia. I stayed in this map until level 84. Make sure to remember to Star Force your Team Dungeon accessories, as you're gonna need them pretty soon. And at level 84, I went to the Dark Rash map in Leifrit. We're rushing to maps with monsters level 100 and higher, as those maps can have Burning, which is another free EXP boost that will help speed up our leveling. Once you hit around level 90, it's time to initiate the leveling fast plan. Go to Skynest 2 in Lifre and stay here until level 100. Star Force monsters give a huge amount of EXP. Their HP is higher, but this doesn't really matter much. If you were playing in a reboot server and played that before, forget about training at non-Star Force monsters. All other maps in the game are dead below level 200. Star Force monsters are your key to leveling fast and nothing else compares. So get to Star Force monsters and do not train at non-Star Force monsters until you you hit level 180. 
Once you hit level 100, go to the Zakoon boss fight and fight the normal version. This boss will give you a nice chunk of EXP once fully defeated. Don't make the same mistake as I did and go around level 97. I got too much EXP and it didn't go over one level and 100%, making me lose out. Make sure to activate a rune and any EXP cards that you have as you go fight this boss. Speaking of which, if you have Legion coins, in the Legion store you can purchase potions that give half a level and an EXP buff. These work on burning characters and are great to skip a few levels earlier on. You can also buy double EXP buffs here. Our next training spot is located at the portal that's on the top right in Warped Pad of Time 3 in Ludibrium. These monsters require 26 Star Force, and if you have more, you'll deal more damage to them, up to 120%. So make sure to Star Force your gear. Besides the theme dungeon accessories, focus on your weapon and gloves first and Star Force those, as they give more attack, making it easier to defeat monsters. We can stay in this map until level 115, 120, or go to the Forgotten Passage at the bottom right of Ludi for a big long map, or Warped Passage at the bottom left of Ludi for a more compact map where some classes like Luminous really shine. Reaching level 105 also unlocks Monster Park. This dungeon gives a good chunk of EXP and you can use the coins obtained from this dungeon to purchase EXP potions that give 10% bonus EXP, as well as attack and attack speed potions which are great for grinding and bossing. The boxes also give good rewards depending on the day. You can enter for free twice a day and buy up to 5 additional entries in the cash shop. These tickets cost reward points in the regular server and mesos in reboot. We continue our strict Star Force monster diet at Cave of Trails 1. You'll need 55 Star Force to train here properly. Really get at Star Force, don't go in with less than 55 unless you want to have a horrible time. You can also go to Banes in the Cave of Trials 3. I usually go here once I am bored of the Junior Cerebus around level 125-130. You can stay in this map all the way to level 145. There also is a Skelegon map and Lifra, but I find the spawn there pretty bad and I usually just stay in this map until 145. Also, once you hit level 140, you will have maxed out all your Forge Up skills and unlock your Hyper skills and Hyper stats. Put points into normal monster damage and damage and focus on maxing out normal monster damage first while putting your spare points here and there into damage. This will help your clearing speed significantly and if you're already funded and one shot everything already anyway, then of course put your Hyper stats points in EXP. Now here comes the boring part of this guide. From level 145 onwards you're going to train at either the blue or green notebooks in the Kerning Tower all the way until level 180. Yep, I'm sorry. These notebooks require 80 Star Force, which should be manageable for most people. Make sure to enter portals that spawn on the map, by the way, for huge EXP boosts and level ups. Especially the purple portals, those are super good. The reason why most people will stay in this map is because the next nicer Star Force maps like Corridor H01 in the Omega Sector require a massive 140 Star Force. That's a lot. And most players won't be able to hit that much Star Force with a the character they just started. If you do, great, definitely go here from level 160 and stay here until level 180. For level 180 onwards, train at Future Pyrian. You can either go to Desert Rocky Road with those Swollen Stumps, Forsaken Excavation Site 2. However, this map is very popular and will most likely have lower burning. I like to go to Fiery Ravine because it usually has more burning and all classes got good upwards mobility these days. Gill Plateau isn't bad either if you prefer to jump left and right. In Future Pyrian, there also are Star Force maps now, but those require 160 Star Force, which is insane and probably unreachable for anyone who just started. I think 80 is a lot already. You just won't have enough equipment to make use of those maps, so just straight into regular monster maps. And of course, once you hit level 199, make sure to complete the Scrapyard Introduction Quest from the Light Bulb. This quest will give you a full level worth of EXP, making the last level an easy one. Congrats, you now hit level 200. Now you can unlock the 50 job advancement and the Arcane River. With the new update come a lot of changes to the daily quest EXP and rewards in this area. The EXP obtained from daily quests got a huge boost. They reward more Arcane symbols as well, which is like the Star Force of the newer areas. So please do your daily quest in each area for leveling faster. And also to make your lives easier, apply some of your hyper stats into Arcane Force so you'll deal more damage to monsters right away. In Vanishing Journey, there aren't that many good training spots sadly. My favorite one is below the cave, where you just go left or right and teleport or just jump back the other way. You can also try any of the nearby maps if this one has low burning. Both Eastern and Western Cave Part 2 are okay as well. 
Once you hit level 205, make sure to complete the Reverse City questline for additional symbols and a good chunk of EXP. Sadly, no maps are really great to grind in here. You could try T-Boy's Research Train 1, but I find the amount of monsters that spawn on this map a bit low. It's a nice small map though. Once you hit level 210, it's time to explore Choo Choo. Most maps at the left side of this area are pretty great. These are pretty long maps with a water current. You can either move above the water if your class has the mobility, or let the current carry you forward. Each map has a teleporter at the end that allows you to teleport back to the start of the current, making it a very fast map to navigate. If you don't like the current maps, I prefer grinding at Biddy Bobby Forest 2. This map is pretty nice as well. Once you hit level 215, unlock Yum Yum Island. Here the one and only best map is Hidden Illyard Field, which does have a hefty arcane requirement, but it's totally worth it. If these monsters are too strong, stay at the previous maps until you hit level 220. Once you hit Latchelin, more maps open up. There are a few maps that are pretty good over here. I always recommend the Clock Tower maps, except for the top map. These are simple jump down maps with a teleporter at the top and bottom. They are easy to grind in and usually have high burning. Other good maps in this area are Outlaw Street 3. This is a popular map though, so it could have lower burning. Occupied Dance Floor 2 is probably the most popular map in this area. It's nice and small, but will definitely have lower burning. I also like to go to Victory Plate Street 2. This this map is pretty decent as well and usually has a bit higher burning. Once you hit level 225, it's time to move on to the next area. Earth Spirits are a great map for Mayplus with low Arcane Power, but I recommend to start going to stronger monsters right away if you have the Arcane Power to one shot. Beneath the Spirit Tree is my all time favorite map in this area. It's easy to navigate and you can jump into the water on the right to get teleported back to the top left. It's nice and easy for most classes. If you're looking for a more in between map, the Volatile Forest is nice to grind in as well for classes with bigger hitboxes on their skills. Congratulations on reaching level 230. In this area, focus your leveling efforts on the map at the bottom right. The Shadow Dance Halls and abandoned areas are all great to grind in. Shadow Dance Hall 4 is the most popular map, and I personally like the abandoned area too. Just place your Edda Shower in the top middle of the map and jump left and right to defeat monsters. Usually this map isn't super busy either, it's pretty good, usually has higher burning. And make sure to keep doing your dailies and monster park for those huge chunks of EXP. Reaching level 235, you will unlock Asphera. The most popular map here is Mirror Touch C2, but this usually has lower burning. Mirror Touch C4 is pretty good as well. Once you hit level 240, you can explore Celis. This is where way more nice grinding maps unlock, and I recommend going for this area as fast as possible. Some highly mobile classes will really like Plunging Depth 3. Mine Kane, for example, trains pretty nice in this map. The final Edge of Light 5 is also really nice and a great training spot for most classes. I really recommend this one as well. All classes are different though, so feel free to experiment with your battle analysis to figure out which map works best for you. Once you hit level 245, the most popular map in Moonbridge is a Void Current 3. It's a great map for every class, but also very popular because of that. Last Horizon 5 is also pretty great for a lot of classes. So is Void Current 1, in case Void Current 3 is taken. Just place Erda Shower in the middle and go ham. Reaching level 250, you unlock the Labyrinth of Suffering. And suffer you will, because there aren't that many nice maps here sadly. I like to go to Core 6, which has an easy rotation and plenty of monster spawn. This map is a bit more popular and therefore could have lower burning. Interior 1 isn't too bad either if Core 6 has low burning or if all the maps are taken. And don't forget to complete your daily quest in Moonbridge for a good chunk of EXP. Your dailies will help you get quite a bit of additional EXP at this point. At level 255, more maps open up in Limina. Limina is full of nice maps. I like to train at Depths 1 since I can just jump attack left and right. It's great for Shade in my opinion. My cane likes to train in maps like Midpoint 2 that are taller and great for classes with tall hitboxes or a lot of upwards mobility like Arc. End of the World 1-4 is probably the most popular map in this area as it allows for lazy farming for a lot of classes. But because of that it will have lower to no burning. The same goes for End of the World 2.5, which is super popular, but also has lower burning because of this. And that should help you reach level 260. I hope these suggestions will help you find the most popular training spots. Sometimes it is better to go to less efficient training maps, just because there is burning or higher burning in those maps. If you aren't sure, always use the battle analysis to figure out which map is better for your class and playstyle. Make sure to complete your dailies and do daily runs of Monster Park for a lot of additional EXP. Again, I hope this helps and best of luck leveling. 
And that's all I had for today. Special thanks to our members for making these videos possible. Special thanks to... Niels de Comic, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Jesus Rodriguez, Kali Mora, Wiley, Riser Ryu, Backspace OTI, Ziggy Deer, History Cannon, Safronix, Flidiot, Knifesu, Cloudfix, Suratito655, Michael Manchaka, Rathius, Afterlord, Betrayal1489, Silvio Nato, Striker Elk, Tidal One Fun, Victor Sundstrom, Matthias Simonson, Mr. Anark, Ben on Games, The Passenger, Kani Wu, Max Bernhardt, Mukao1017, BNB King, Scotty Flies Fast, Gabriel Egg, Fecko, Vake Botnet, Dante Victory, Matinu Dev, Snack HBG, Only, Lord Facile, Spots the Kaiser, That Archie Guy, Louis Bento Brandau, Snuffu Pop, Tails Curspet, The Wolf Rake, Gaber Wolf, Live Love Maple Story, Kali Duckfoos, Quinn Migu, Sir Otter, Nix, and Gulame Paiva. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling!